Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is Lecture 10, Activity-Based Costing System. At the end of the video, you should be able to define and explain activity-based costing system, define and explain cost pools and cost drivers, and differentiate traditional costing to ABC system. This is your lecturer, Kevin Troy M. Chua. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites, please send me a message at kevintroy.chua1994 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your utmost support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. And may these videos continue to help students in their online learning and academic development. May these videos continue to help teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. Thank you very much for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. Maraming maraming salamat po. In the last lesson, we discussed accounting for manufacturing overhead and we are to continue to continue with another lesson which is activity-based costing system this is actually a mere continuation of the overhead topic because this will relate more actually on overhead but uh, let's uh, introduce you to a new costing system which is what we call activity-based costing system before that let's discuss first traditional costing or the thing that we learned so far no yung ating pong traditional costing at paggamit ng predetermined plant-wide rates okay broad averaging or peanut butter costing system describes a costing approach that uses broad averages for assigning the cost of resources uniformly to cost objects when the individual products or services in fact use those resources in non-uniform ways so di ba nga po dun sa nakaraang lesson gumaga uh, nag allocate pa tayo ng mga service department cost tapos iba-iba po yung ating mga pinanggagalingan ng overhead and then ang ginagawa po natin is pwede po tayo mag-compute ng single plant-wide or predetermined overhead rate and then what happens is that like how we do it kukuha tayo ng peanut butter at kung paano po natin i-spread yung peanut butter sa tinapay ganun din po tayo mag-allocate ng ating overhead cost no a single plant-wide rate is being applied into the whole production process that is what we call traditional costing or peanut butter costing system kaya nga po siya tinawag na peanut butter costing system it's because kung paano tayo Kaya kumuha ng peanut butter, ini-spread po natin sa entire piece of bread dun sa mismo tinapay. Like how we do it in the peanut butter, the overhead is also applied to the production uniformly. However, tinan nyo po yung nakalagay dito. Yung mga resources po natin and the production process itself, eh, non-uniform po ang paggamit natin. Iba-iba po ang level natin ng, pag, ng na-allocate na service department cost. Iba-iba po yung number of machine hours na nagagamit natin para dun sa uh, specific na production process. So basically, sometimes traditional costing is medyo misleading. No? I'm not saying it's wrong, but sometimes it might be misleading that we are costing products uniformly when in reality, ang paggamit po natin ng uh, mga overhead na activities natin eh, hindi pare-pareho. Lalo na po kung iba-iba ang product lines ng isang manufacturing company. So, ang nangyayari po kasi when we are using a single plant-wide predetermined overhead rate, nagkakaroon po tayo ng product cost cross-subsidization. If a company under cost one product, it will over cost at least one of its products. Meron po tayong isang product na under costed, mas mababa ang cost kesa sa inaasahan. Pero dahil po may na under cost, meron po tayong product na mao over cost. Okay? So, kailan po natin masasabi that there is product under costing and there is a product over costing? Product undercosting happens when a product consumes high level of resources, pero ang nare-report lang po natin cost sa kanya is much more lower than expected. 
And then, pag overcosting naman po, it happens when a product consumes low level of resources but is being reported on a higher cost than expected. Okay? So, ganun lang po kadali. Pag undercosting, mas mababa kesa sa inaasahan. Pag overcosting, mas mataas kesa sa inaasahan. Okay? So, ang gusto nating maiwasan is in as much as possible, we are able to cost our products in a more detailed, hindi lang detailed, pero talagang mas specific at mas concise and precise. Okay? Mali yung concise. Precise pala. Sorry. Okay? So, that mas precise yung costing natin ng product. Para maiwasan natin yung undercosting and overcosting, pwede tayong gumamit ng tinatawag nating activity-based costing. What happens in activity-based costing? From the word itself, you are costing your activities based on the activities themselves that is involved in the production process. Activity-based costing system allocates overhead cost to multiple activity cost pools and assigns the cost pools to products by means of cost drivers. We have two new words that you need to understand which is a cost driver and a cost pool. A cost driver is a factor that causes change in the cost pool for a particular activity. Siya yung basis natin ng mga pangyayari. Number of machines set up, number of pounds used, yung mga ganon. Okay? It is used as a basis for cost allocation. Tandaan nyo pong mabuti, siya po ang ginagamit nating basis kung paano po tayo mamaya mag allocate ng cost. Any factor of activity that has a direct cost and effect relationship. Cost and effect relationship because dahil nangyari siya, Anong effect niya? May i-allocate kang cost. Okay? Again, bakit po siya cost and effect relationship? Dahil may nangyaring cost driver or merong cost driver na magiging allocation ng cost basis mo, magkakaroon ng effect. So, ang dating, pag yung activity mo mas mataas, yung cost na ma-allocate parang mas mataas. Okay? Later, kapag ka may amounts, mas magiget nyo na siya. Okay? Ngayon, dito naman sa cost pool, it is a bucket in which costs are accumulated that relate to a single measure in ABC system. Imagine a swimming pool. ba? Diba? Ang isang swimming pool, ipon lahat ng tubig. In activity-based costing system, kaya natin siya tinatawag na cost pool, nakaipon lahat ng cost ng product bago mo ma-allocate. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na activity post. Ah, sorry. Activity cost Okay. Now, for you to understand further yung ating pong cost driver and cost pool, eh di mag-problem na tayo. Okay? Let's try. The following cost information has been established by the accounting department of XYZ Manufacturing Company. So, binigyan po tayo ng during the period ang direct materials po na used is 495,000 and then the direct labor used is 600,000. Now for overhead, these are the activity cost pools, okay? Machine setups which is 300,000 and then materials handling po is ang incur is 150,000, hazardous waste control 50,000, quality control 100,000 and other overhead cost 300,000. Now the cost driver which will be the basis ng ating allocation of overhead later is pag machine set up kung ilan yung set up na nangyari okay and in that specific period naka 100 set ups po tayo and then syempre yung materials handling gano ka bigat yung materials na hinahandle di ba okay which is 50,000 pounds for that specific period For hazardous waste control, it's the weight of hazardous waste, which is 10,000 pounds. For quality control, is kung ilan yung inspections na nagawa para magawa yung quality control procedures. So for that period, naka 1,000 inspections po tayo. And then for any other overhead cost, syempre machine hours. Okay? Ano po itong mga other overhead cost? Pwede nandito yung ating mga depreciation o kaya utility. So, depende po. Oh, utility, yun. Depende po. No? Sa sa galaw ng company sa production process. Okay? So, just to simplify, let's just call it other overhead cost based on machine hours. And in that specific period, 30,000 machine hours po yung nagamit. 
Okay, so this is your detailed cost information. So, i-break down po natin based on the three product lines of the company, which is product X, product Y, and product Z. At, at yung 495,000 kanina, at saka yung 600,000 na materials and labor, ito po yung breakdown. 150, 180, 165, and 200, 200, 200. Okay, what can you infer from this? Pwedeng pare-pareho lang siya ng proseso, kaya pare-pareho yung direct labor cost. Pero baka yung mga materials na ginagamit, mas mahal sa product Y. Pwede siguro si product X ay uh, plastic lang, si product Y bakal. Yung mga ganun, no? Minsan ay ilalagay niyo yung shoes nyo on being a manufacturer para mas naiintindihan nyo yung problem. Although hindi natin kailangan yung ganong information na yun ngayon sa problem, okay? Kasi ang, ang ating mas pag-uusapan ngayon is more on the overhead side, okay? And then... Di ba kanina binigyan po tayo ng 100 setups, tapos yung na-handle daw materials is 50,000 pounds, for the hazardous waste, 10,000 pounds, taka 1,000 inspections daw po, at 30,000 machine hours yung nagamit. Ngayon, bin-breakdown po yan per product, per activity. So, kunyari, hindi ko nalalahatin isa-isa. Kunyari, for product X, naka 45 machine setups tayo. Okay? Yung materials handling naman for product Y, 10,000 pounds yung na-handle. Okay? And then kay product Z naman po is 400 times po na nag-inspect. Okay? Kaya hanggang sa mabuo yung 1,000 na inspections, which is 400 inspections from product X, 200 inspections from product Y, and another 400 inspections from product Z. Okay, ganun lang po siya. Nakaspecify lang po dito yung lahat ng activities na nagawa natin. Okay, so for this problem na sasagutan natin, i-assume po natin na lahat ng product lines ay nakabenta po tayo at nakapag-produce. Okay, so ang pinroduce daw po natin is 2,500 units for each of the products at nabenta daw po natin lahat ng production. Okay, huwag natin pahirapan. <laughs> and then, uh, meron po tayong selling prices. So the selling price of product X is 400 pesos. The selling price of product Y is 410 pesos. And the selling price of product Z is 405 pesos. And to further simplify the problem, wag na po tayo maglagay ng beginning and ending work in process and finished goods inventory. Pero kung gusto nyo, lalagyan natin sa inyong mga examination. <laughs> okay. So, the requirement is, let's compute for the product cost and gross profit under traditional costing and compute the product cost and gross profit under activity-based costing system. Okay. Siyempre, mas madali yung traditional costing kasi yan na po yung ating nakasanayan. Oh, di try natin sa traditional costing. This is how we do it in traditional costing. Ayan. Lista nyo lang po yung direct materials used for product X, product Y, and product C, and you get the total. Given naman na po yan, di ba? Okay. And then direct labor po natin is 200, 200 yung 200, which gives you 600,000. Now, in traditional costing, ang ginagawa po natin is predetermined overhead rate. Kung paano po natin i-allocate yung overhead ay uh, depende po sa magiging predetermined overhead rate. Let's assume for this problem that the factory overhead is being allocated and applied to production on the basis of the number of units produced and sold. Okay? So, si product X ay nakapag-produce po tayo ng 2,500 same with product Y and with product C. So, ang ating pong magiging allocation is 25 over 75. In which, since pare-pareho lang naman sila ng allocation multiplier, you just simply divide it by 3 actually. So, 900,000 divided by 3 is 300,000. Or you can do the more formal way, 900,000 times 25 over 75. Pwede din po yun. Ngayon, kung sabihin sa inyo sa problem na uh, in traditional costing, uh, nakadepende siya sa direct labor hours or sa machine hours, eh marunong naman na po kayo nun dahil napag-aralan na po natin yun sa predetermined overhead rate. Now, in this problem, ang ginamit natin is the number of units produced and sold. Yun po yung ating naging basis to allocate your overhead per product line. So, ito po yung mga applied overhead natin dyan. Okay? So, as you know it, the trio of materials, labor, and overhead, yun po ang total manufacturing cost. Okay? So, for product X is 650,000, for product Y is 680,000, and for product Z is 665,000. Okay? 
Yan na po ang ating magiging cost of goods sold dahil lahat po ng ating pinroduce na 2,500 units is nabenta din naman. Okay? So kung ano yung total manufacturing cost natin for this problem, yan na din po yung cost of goods sold natin kasi nabenta naman siya lahat. Okay? So in computing the gross profit, apply lang po natin yung selling price for product X is 2,500 units sold at the selling price of 400 pesos. And then for product Y is 410 pesos and for product C is 400 pesos. 5 pesos. Okay? We will deduct the cost of goods sold na na-compute po natin kanina, which is 650, 680, and 665. Then just get the total. Alam naman po natin na ang total ay ginagamit po natin para saan? For income statement purposes ng GAAP. ba? Diba? Pang GAAP po yan. Pang financial accounting information po yan. Okay? So, computing for the gross profit for each of the product lines. For product X is 350,000. For product Y is 345,000. And for product C is 347,500. Pasukan ko lang po ng dati nating konseptong napag-aralan. If you would remember, hindi po tayo nagre-report ng external financial statement na ang income statement ay naka-breakdown into product line. Ang nire-report lang po natin under financial accounting is kung ano po yung ating income statement na totality of the entity. So, sales of 3,037,500 minus cost of goods sold of 1,995,000 that is your gross profit of 1,042,500. Yan po ang nire-report natin under GAAP. However, for managerial accounting, dahil ginagamit na po natin siya for operational decision making, Internally, pwede na po natin i-prepare yung ganitong income statement para mas mapag-aralan ng mabuti yung ating cost information. So, we can break down yung ating pong income statement per product line. Kasi ginagamit po natin siya for decision making. Pero never po natin ginagawa yan under financial accounting. Yan po yung nakasanayan yung traditional costing system. Applyan na po natin ng ABC. First step is to calculate for the overhead pool rates per activity. Saan po nakabase? Sa cost driver. Ano pong sabi natin kanina? The basis of the allocation of your overhead is based on the cost drivers. Charan! Ganito po yan. Madali lang yan. If machine setups is 300,000 for the period and the number of all the setups done during the period is 100 setup, you just simply divide. 300,000 divided by 100 setup is 3,000 pesos per setup. For materials handling naman po is 150,000 and 50,000 pounds po. So divide nyo lang 3 pesos per pound. For hazardous waste control, 5 pesos per pound. For quality control, 100 pesos per inspection and other overhead cost is applied at 10 pesos per machine hour. Okay? Pag sinabi po kasi nating activity-based costing, nakita nyo talagang detalyado, di ba? Ang application natin ng overhead is talagang iisa-isahin mo pa lahat ng activity. Kaya nga tinawag na activity-based costing. Bababa tayo sa detalye ng production process base sa kung anong activity ang ginawa ng company. Kaya siya tinawag na ABC, Okay? Step 2 is to allocate overhead based on, act, uh, on activity using the pool rates that you have already calculated. Charan! Oh, ganito po yan. Huwag kayong malula. Madali lang yan. Okay. Remember na ang ating pong pool rate for the machine setup is 3,000 pesos per setup. ba? Diba? You simply multiply it to the assigned number of setups na ginawa per product line. Balik po kayo sa given natin kanina. Ang product X po ay naka-45 setups, si product Y ay naka-30 setups, at si product Z ay naka-25 setups. You simply multiply the pool rate based on the activity per product line. Okay? So, for example, 3,000 times 45 is 135,000. 3,000 times 30 is 90,000. And 3,000 times 25 is 75,000. Yun na po yung 300,000 na nandun po kanina sa ating total machine setup cost na overhead. Okay? Ganun din po ang gagawin natin sa materials handling. Kung babalik kayo sa given kanina, ang nakuha nating pull rate is 3 pesos per pound. Naka 15,000 pounds ang na-handle for X. 
10,000 pounds for Y and for Z. Simply multiply and you get 45, 30, and 75,000. And then, ang pull rate naman po natin for hazardous waste control is 5 pesos. So, you multiply it based on the number of pounds na related sa hazardous wastes. You simply multiply and we have 12,500, 25,000, and 12,500 for all of the products. Sa quality control naman po, ang pull rate natin is 100 pesos per inspection. You simply multiply it to the number of inspections done for each product. So, we have 40,000, 20,000, and 40,000. And for other overhead cost, 10 pesos po ang ating pull rate at tig the 10,000 hours po siya. Kaya pare-pareho lang siyang 100,000. Get the total for product X, get the total for product Y, and get the total for product C. That is your total allocated overhead dahil ang ginamit natin ay activity-based costing. Ang allocation po natin ng overhead ay base sa mga activity at hindi lamang sa activity kung ilan pa yung level of activity na nagamit sila or ginawa dun sa product na yun. Based on setups, number of pounds handled, hazardous waste na kinontrol, inspections ng quality control, and all other overhead. Di ba sobrang detalyado? Kasi inisa-isa natin yung detalye ng activities na ginawa per product line. Now, for step 3, edi the big 3, trio lang din uli, Materials, labor, overhead. For materials and labor, yan lang din po yung given natin kanina. Saan nyo po kukunin yung overhead? Dun po sa nakompute natin kanina. So, the total overhead applied for product X is 332,500. For product Y is 265,000. And for product Z is 302,500. Which will become your total manufacturing cost. And since wala nga po tayo mga beginning and ending balances ng work in process and uh, finished goods inventory, that will also be your cost of goods sold dahil lahat naman daw po ng pinroduce ay nabenta. So for product 4, ganun lang din, ah, sorry, step 4. So for step 4 po, ang gross profit po is sales minus cost of goods sold and you get your gross profit. Dapat po, whether traditional or ABC, ang makukuha mong gross profit, pareho pa din. Yun nga lang po, meron na po tayong magiging pagkakaiba sa gross profit per product line. Okay. Now that I've mentioned it, let's do a comparison. Ito po ang ating traditional costing gross profit and cost information at ito naman po no nag-ABC tayo. Let's answer this question. With the use of traditional costing, are the products under cost or over cost? Isa-isahin natin. Under traditional costing, 650,000 ang total product cost for product X. Pero nung nagdetalye na tayo na nakabase sa machine setup, sa machine hours, sa mga inspections na ginawa sa kanya, ang dapat pala talagang cost ng lahat ng products na yun is 682,500. So, nung gumamit tayo ng traditional costing, under cost ba yung product or over cost? Since mas maliit po yung naging cost niya sa traditional costing, opposed to ABC, eh, under costing po tayo. Kasi, nung nagdetalye na tayo, 682,500 pala yung cost ng lahat ng products ng product X na naproduce natin. Okay? How about product Y? In traditional costing system, 680,000. Pero nung nag-ABC tayo, 645,000 lang pala. Yan po ay overcosting naman tayo. Okay? And then for product Z naman po, 665,000. Pero ang talagang cost pala ng product Z production is 667,500. Nagkaroon po tayo ng under costing. Mas maganda pong gumamit ng ABC kasi mas detalyado. Pero, gamit ka lang ng traditional costing kung hindi naman ganong complex yung manufacturing process ng company mo or baka naman isa lang yung product line mo. Huwag ka na mag-inarte mag-activity-based costing. Baka mas mabuti sa'yo yung traditional. Pareho naman silang may advantages and disadvantages. And, now that I've mentioned it, let's uh, discuss some benefits and limitations of ABC. Okay. 
the benefit of using activity-based costing is that, number one, it provides realistic cost of manufacturing for specific products. Abay, nakita naman natin, talagang we dig deeper into the number of setups. We dig deeper into the number of machine hours that was used for that specific product. In turn, yung ating pong costing ng ating products and the manufacturing process itself becomes more realistic as opposed to traditional costing na basta ito na yung buong amount ng overhead, ipinat butter mo na lang dun sa tinapay. Di ba? Okay. Number two is, allocates manufacturing overhead more accurately to products and processes that use the activity. And it becomes more accurate because we're based on the activity that was uh, applied to that uh, certain production process. Okay? Number three, it identifies inefficient processes and targets for improvement. San mo po mahuhuli kapag ka tingin mo yung process ay inefficient? Mahuhuli mo yan pag sobrang taas ng overhead cost. But parang ang laki ng ginagastos nating overhead dito? Okay? Pag ma- mahuhuli mo yan, pag masyadong mataas yung overhead cost, asahan mo yung kanyang cost driver, yung number of... Um, setups na ginagawa sa kanya, yung, yung inspections na ginagawa sa kanya, baka mas marami kesa sa inaasahan. Pag gumamit ka na activity-based costing, huli mo yun. And in turn, because you are already able to identify inefficient processes, you can now point improvements that should be made in the production process. Number four, determines product profit margins more precisely. Mas nalalaman natin yung product na talagang kumikita at alam natin yung product na mas lower ang uh, ang margin or kinikita. It's because yung costing natin ng produkto is talagang mas precise. So yung pagkuha natin ng profit margin is mas precise. Okay, next po. Discovers which processes have unnecessary and wasted cost. Para pong number three na ma-identify po natin yung inefficient processes. Malalaman din po natin under activity-based costing system kung meron tayong wasted cost or unnecessary cost. Mahuhuli nyo po yan pag masyadong mataas yung overhead. Okay? And then the last one is offers better understanding and justification of cost in manufacturing overhead. After all, cost accounting and managerial accounting is about decision making and uh, because we want to understand the operations better activity based costing and activity based management offers managers a better understanding na bat ba natin ginagastos talaga tong produktong to para saan ba talaga tong mga machine setup cost natin baka naman pwedeng i-eliminate na natin yan o di kaya um baka naman pwede na nating i-eliminate yung inspection no pero pero syempre actually ang inspection hindi natin yan pwedeng i-eliminate no in example ko lang siya na baka merong kailangan mga processes na pwedeng hindi na natin pagdaanan at ano yung mga processes na dapat natin pagdaanan okay depende po sa company ko anong uh, kung anong pwede nilang i-apply sa production process okay pero yung sinabi ko kanina <laughs> na baka pwedeng wag na mag-inspection depende pa rin yung sa company kasi mas mag- Ganda naman talaga na merong inspection. O, di naman tayo sa limitations. Bakit naman hindi ka mag abc Okay? Number one, collection and preparation of data is time-consuming. Ay, totoo naman, di ba? Sabi nga natin, kaya nga tayo nag-normal costing system, kaya nga tayo nag-predetermined overhead rate, is para mapabilis yung cost information natin and in turn, makapag-decide tayo ng prices na mas mabilis. However, if you will be using activity-based costing system, time-consuming po ang pagkuha natin ng data. Imagine, per product line, you need to know the number of setups. You need to know the number of inspections that was done. You need to know the cafeteria cost that was allocated to each product. Ganun siya, isa-isayin mo. Okay? And then, costs more to accumulate and analyze information. Mas costly po, may gastos din po kasi sa isang kumpanya pag nag-activity-based costing system po siya eh. Okay? Siyempre, the, the accountants would spend more time in analyzing things. And then, yung ating pong mga production managers would be digging deeper into the details. So, it entails cost. Kahit sabihing illiteral natin na mas longer yung kanilang... Uh, 
hours sa opisina o hindi po kayo sa opisina dun sa factory because they're analyzing things, di ba? It increases your utility cost, it increases your salaries, di ba? So, dahil more time is being spent because of the digging deeper into analysis, eh, mas mataas po yung cost talaga na nagagastos natin kapag ka po tayo ay nag abc Source data isn't always readily available from normal accounting reports. No, If you really want to use ABC, your accounting system should be really set up to use ABC. No, Kapag ka normal accounting reports, baka hindi siya makatulong agad-agad sa'yo. Ang ingin naman na ito. <laughs> okay, next. Reports from ABC don't always conform to GAAP and can't be used for external reporting. Yan naman po lagi yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na kaya nga po galing sa normal costing eh naga naga-adjust tayo ng variance kasi for external reporting kailangan natin actual product cost, di ba? How much more pag gumamit tayo ng ABC? Baka meron tayong mga ABC methodologies na hindi pa nagko-conform sa GAAP. So, watch out po tayo doon kasi baka in decision making, okay tayo, pero sa external reporting nat natin, under GAAP, baka hindi na tayo sumasabay. Okay? Data produced by ABC may conflict with managerial performance standards previously established from traditional costing methods. So, let's say for example, the company started with the use, with the use of tra traditional costing methods. Biglang nag-ABC. So, yung atin pong pag-check ng performance standards uh, per manager or per department, dapat i-conform din po natin siya with ABC. Kasi hindi magtutugma yan pag bigla-bigla lang kayo nag-ABC. And then lastly, may not be useful for companies where overhead is small in proportion to total operating cost. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina, na baka naman isang product line ka lang, huwag ka nang mag-inarting gumamit ng ABC, baka mas applicable sa'yo si traditional costing system. Okay? So, kailan ka po gagamit ng ABC? When will you switch to ABC? When your product lines differ greatly in volume and manufacturing complexity, so lalo na kung ikaw ay malaking production process, like San Miguel Corporation, di ba? Ayun, or iba-iba yung, or kung lahat ng minamanufacture mo pagkain, pero iba-ibang pagkain naman. So, so, pwede kang gumamit ng ABC. Or di po kaya, product lines are numerous, diverse, and require different, differing degrees of support service. Okay? So, baka po, dahil sa different product lines na meron ka, iba-iba po yung activities na nakapaloob sa overhead mo. You need to switch to ABC. Hindi na magiging applicable sa iyo yung standard predetermined overhead rate. Overhead costs constitute a significant portion of total cost. Kung sa trio ng magkakapatid na materials, labor, and overhead is overhead cost is a big portion of the total product cost, then you need to be detailed and precise. Traditional costing will not be applicable to you because malaki ang portion ng overhead sa total product cost mo ay nako, kailangan yung mismong cost mo ng overhead, precise ka dapat dyan. Okay? And then the manufacturing process or the number of products has changed significantly. So kung dati one product line ka lang, lumalaki yung company mo, nag-offer ka na ng iba-ibang products and services. So baka kailangan mo na mag-ABC. Kasi nung one product line ka lang, applicable sa'yo si traditional costing, pero nung dumadami na yung product lines mo, nagiging complex na yung operations mo ay nako, baka kailangan mo na mag-ABC dyan. Okay? And then, production or marketing managers are ignoring data provided by the existing system. So, if the existing system is not helpful already in decision making, and then I think it's better to switch to ABC so that the data will be more helpful in decision making. Thank you very much for these wonderful websites and textbooks and handouts that we used for this uh, lesson for today. And our next lesson is Job Order Costing System.
Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites, please send me a message at kevintroy.chua1994 at gmail.com. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH College Edition and we're still at Cost Accounting and Control. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Reach for your dreams. Hiraya Manawari.